Welcome to Computer Keys Tutorials. In this video, I'll show you how to use Keys Overlay Image Maker to take an existing image, for instance one that's been scanned or created by your art department, and import it into Keys Overlay so that it can be used with your spooled files. I'll also provide some tips on getting your spooled file data to fit your existing image if things aren't lining up properly. The first step is to open your existing image that you want to import into Keys Overlay. In my case, the image has been provided to me in PDF format. It could also be a TIFF, JPEG, or Word document. It doesn't matter what the image type is, we always want to send it through the ImageMaker print driver to convert it into a valid TIFF that Keys Overlay can work with. So here's my PDF. I click Print, then change the printer to Keys Overlay Image Maker. If you are starting with a PDF document, you don't want Adobe to scale your image as this will shrink your overlay and your data may no longer fit. Make sure you select None. Also, deselect Auto Rotate and Center although I'm going to leave mine on so that I can demonstrate how to crop and rotate images in Keys Overlay later. Make sure you do not select Print to File, because although that is what we are doing, this is Adobe's menu, and their Print to File conflicts with the ImageMaker Print Driver's Print to File, which will be automatically initiated in the next step after you click Print. If you select Properties, you can see what resolution will be generated for your overlay. Mine is at 300 dpi which is fine for this project. Depending on your computer, it may be defaulting to a different setting. We usually recommend that you stick with either 200 or 300 dpi, as the greater the resolution, the larger the file size will be. From here, I do not want to make any other changes in the print menu. Click OK. Now make sure that you have the correct file path selected. This step will be creating a valid TIFF image version of your original image but it will not be the final version of your overlay, so we recommend not changing the name of the file at this stage, as it only makes selecting the correct final overlay confusing later. Click Print. Now open up the Keys Overlay Mapping tool and go to the Work with Single Image tab in the bottom portion of the screen. Open the TIFF image that you just created with the Image Maker. Mine has come in sideways and with extra space around it because I left Auto Rotate and Center on, but this is easy to fix. Just click Rotate, then drag your mouse around the image, being sure to leave a little bit of white space on all sides since printers cannot print all the way to the edges of a piece of paper. Click Crop and Confirm. It is important to resave your image at this point because that will allow it to be recompressed from multiple megabytes in size to only a few kilobytes. It also saves the changes you have made to it, in my case the cropping and rotating. So right click and select Save As. Be sure to rename your image to something appropriate. If your image is black and white, select that here and then change the compression method to CCITT T6. If however your image is in color, like mine, your best option for compression will be to stick with Deflate. Click Save. As you can see, instead of being over a megabyte, it is just 47 kilobytes in size. Back in the mapping tool, make sure you are in the images tab, then click the export button. Now click the work with spooled files tab and open a spooled file that is supposed to fit with the image you are using. Under the page tab, I'll make the dimensions correct for my image. I'll change the height to 7 and the number of rows to 42. Your data should fit on the overlay if it has been created for it and you crop the image in the correct place. But if for some reason it doesn't line up, it is very easy to adjust the page margins to make everything fit. I'll set the top margin down to 0.2 to show you how that moves the data from my spooled file. Everything is shifted down. I'll put it back to 0. If I change the right margin to 0, my data appears to stretch out. I'll try 0.1 next. That looks pretty good. It's best to move all the data at once like this, rather than trying to move each line individually. If you cropped your image incorrectly, 
you can adjust the image tab's information to change how the image falls on the page. But keep in mind that the numbers entered here are interpreted as pixels, not inches, since we are dealing with an image. I'll shift it down 10, and then back up to give you an idea how it works. Now that the majority of the data is placed where we want it, change the process mode under the page tab from full page to field mapping. This will allow us to manipulate individual fields. The only line that I want to change in the invoice is the invoice number in the top right corner to match the words invoice number from the overlay. First, I need to remove the invoice number from the fields tab so that when I change its font size, the leading spaces do not get larger as well and push the important characters, the actual invoice number, off of the page to the right. To find the correct line under the fields tab, I simply right click on it in the display window and select locate object. It has highlighted the correct line, so I click remove and then go to the work with spooled files tab and re-import just the invoice number without all the leading spaces. Highlight it, then click export being sure to still be in the Fields tab on the top portion of the screen. To make the invoice number match, I'm changing it to Helvetica font, dark blue, size 24 font, and bold. It would also look better if I moved it a little bit more to the left, so right click where I want to move it to and select Move Horizontal. Thank you for watching. You can visit us at computerkeys.com.